Hello and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting. I hope you've got your drink ready. I've got my glass of wine. We are going to do some fun creative crafting tonight and we're going to focus in on not wasting products. So tonight we are going to make our own DIY chalk sprays, kind of a maybe like a distress oxide kind of spray or I've got these two here on my desk which are ones that I've bought in the past. Now the problem I have with these sprays is I find that they clog up quick they stop working, they might dry out, they separate like this one here on the left, the pink one, I can't get it to go back together. And I thought let's just make our own and we'll make what we need. So we're not going to make a big vast amount of it, we're going to make what we need in order to create a beautiful project. So what we're going to need to create our stuff is some bottles. These are just off of Amazon. I went and got 10 mil bottles which is the small bottle and I believe the bigger ones are 30 mils. You need a glove if you don't want to get your fingers inky. You need some acrylic paint. Doesn't matter if it's cheap or um, expensive. Just some white acrylic paint will work. You can use food coloring. I'll show you that in this video. Or you can use reinkers, distress inks, um, memento inks. As long as it's a water-based inking color, that's what will work for this project. So food coloring, 100% works. So you don't have to break the budget to do this and we can create a really fun thing. I'm also going to use a chopstick as a stir stick so either a whisk or a chopstick will be brilliant and obviously a jug with some water helps um, and we are going to get started. So the first option I'm going to share with you is a way to make a slightly uh, more watered down version if you don't want to use too much acrylic paint and you've not got a lot of acrylic paint this is a good option for you so I'm going to just pour my paint directly into my bottle ready for my spray. Now I'm not measuring and I'm not um, going to give you any weights or anything because it depends on your spray bottle, it depends how much you want to make or how much you may need. But what I'm doing for this first one is I've got probably about a quarter of my bottle with paint and I'm going to add in about half of my bottle's worth of water, so filling it up to sort of three quarters full. I hope that makes sense. So I've got sort of a quarter paint and then half worth of water taking us to three quarters of the bottle. So you can kind of see I've marked here. I did add a little bit more water than that line there. I just went a little bit higher. But again, towards the end of the video, you're going to see where I use a lot more paint and you can see the difference you get in those color options. So I'm going to then fill up my water into each of my um, containers. Um, this is a great way if you want to mix up your paint and you only have one spray bottle and you only really want one color, this is a great option for you because it's sort of less effort and less wastage. However, this is the harder way to do it. So you can see all that acrylic paint is sat there on the bottom. It takes a lot of vigorous shaking to kind of mix that in. Hence why I've got the chopstick there. I do take the chopstick and give it a little stir to lift it off the bottom and shake it some more. And I'm pressing my finger quite firmly, although I did spray <laughs> a bit all over my desk a couple times over. So I'm going to share with you now how I'm going to add my color in. And I'm going to use my food coloring as well as my distressing to share with you the difference in them, which is pretty much nothing. So I've got my um, food uh coloring which I did buy off of Amazon and it's the slightly more expensive food coloring so that you get that really vibrant cake color. It's my husband that bakes and not me <laughs> but I got the slightly more expensive one so they're very pigmented and I also have quite a variety of colors so up to you what you want to use and what you want to do uh, but either works. Now here I'm shaking it and you can actually see how much of that white paint has not blended in. You can see it's all stuck to the sides there. So that's a bit annoying, um, but I will share with you the next sort of way you can do it, which will help you a bit more with blending it together. So I'm just shaky, 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 making sure it's getting nice and mixed in with that acrylic paint. And then I'm going to use the food coloring in the other one. And um, They're very similar teal colors and I've got very much the same thing going on in both of them. And I just added color until I got a color I really liked. Now pay attention to the bottom. You need to shake until that bottom is clear. If you see white in that bottom, your nozzle will suck up that paint. Now here's one of my oopsies where I just got paint over because I didn't cover it fully. Um, so make sure when you start shaking, don't go too vigorous too quick because if you've not got your finger over it, you're going to have a right mess everywhere. So I'm going to label them now so that I remember which one's which because they look so similar. And again, it's all about adding how how much color you want. You want it to get the sort of depth of color that your heart desires. So you can put in less if you want more of a pale color, more if you want more of a rich, darker color. 
Now, it also depends on the amount of acrylic paint you put in as to how this dries and how it will look. And I'll show you these all dry at the end and I'll show you sort of the different um, strengths of acrylic paint in it. So here they are on black and on white. This is quite a heavy application. Now, if you enjoy this video and if you like my channel, please do consider liking, sharing and subscribing. This really, really helps my channel to keep growing and keep moving. And lately, I've had a really massive drop in numbers of views and subscribers, which has been a bit gutting. So if you haven't subscribed and you do enjoy this, please make sure you do. My next option is the very obvious. We are going to mix it in my jug. So I've got my measuring jug, my chopstick, and this took a fraction of the time to blend the water with the paint. However, you do end up with slightly more um, because it's gonna be harder in this giant sort of measuring jug to make a smaller portion. However, we can then pour exactly what we want and I've only put the tiniest amount in these spray bottles. So now I can really, really save on my ink colors. I can really save on using my reinkers and that food coloring. I can really make them stretch. I'm only adding about five or six drops rather than two big squidges because in these bottles I've just got the tiniest amount and now I've got no paint stuck to the sides of it. It's all blended beautifully. So I'm just gonna mark on my little jar here so you can see how much I put in. That is literally all I poured in from my big jug. Just that amount and then I added about five drops and so the concentration is a lot higher but I didn't have to waste any product doing it. So top tip, make only what you need. Just make a small amount because how much are you gonna actually spritz? I cannot guarantee this won't go moldy either because we are using water. I don't know how to make it sort of lifelong safe and I can't tell you how long it will last without going moldy because I've only made this today. So this is why I'm thinking waste not, want not. Make just what you need and then that way you can rinse out your bottle and reuse it. Now with storage, again, we want to waste not, want not. We're going to recycle. So I've got an old shampoo bottle and this works great. Um, any kind of old bottle, shampoo bottle, anything that will sort of hold your liquid, is fantastic. So I'm going to pour the rest of my solution in here. I'll put it on my shelf. We'll see how long it lasts. But this way I can then go ahead and take this product and use it to make a spray as I go. So if I decide I want a nice beautiful background, I can just quickly grab this bottle of my pre-ready mixed solution. I can shake it up and then I'm ready. And I can add it into one of my little spray bottles. So now I'm just going to share with you how I do it. This one's not ideal, obviously, because it's got the little hole in the middle, so it kind of drippy drabbied everywhere on my desk. However, if you've got a shampoo bottle like this one, it's got a great little nozzle on the side, and that will make it easier for pouring into a bottle, and then that way you don't have to worry about a jug or a, um, a pipette or anything like that. Obviously, you can use an old water bottle, and that will work as well. Now for this paint that I did here, this is where I stepped it up and I thought how much acrylic paint can I put in versus water and it, will it allow me to spray because I really wanted that color to be quite concentrated on my black cardstock. So for this one, this is where I want it to really pop off black and for this I did 70% acrylic paint, 30% water and you get a lot more of a concentrated color. Again just mix what you need. So in that bottle now, I've got that really concentrated bit and I can just add in my coloring. For here, because I sprayed it so thick and I sprayed so much on, I did get quite a bit of the white paint sort of showing through. And in a minute, you'll see when I spray it from a further distance, so I'm getting more of the mist look, you don't get those sort of white blobs kind of popping to the surface. So the color seemed to sink quicker than my acrylic paint. So there you can see on the left, that that paint is kind of showing through and those you can see little white spots. They're still blue, but they're a bit more white looking. Now here we're going back to that original one, which is more like the 70% water, 30% paint. And you can see the difference. The blue really pops a lot more when you've got a lot more of the white acrylic paint in your solution. So just have a play and have a mix and make sure that it's not getting too thick and sludgy that your spray container isn't gonna pick it up. But I know that about 70% paint versus and with 30% water will allow you to still spray. So here's the food coloring. I've got some pink food coloring here and you can see it really pop off of the black. And this is fully dry now. I left them to dry and I heat set some of them so I could speed up my process to share with you. Now for these next samples, I went ahead and grabbed a box and I sprayed them into the box. I put my piece of card down, sprayed into the box from quite a distance. So that way you get that beautiful splattery background effect and you can kind of get that chalky, um, distressy, oxidey kind of look to your projects. 
So for the first one, I used my Distress Ink and Yellow Food Coloring, and I did these first few backgrounds just using those two colors. So this one here, I sprayed from above, and I did about two or three spritzes of each color. And then that was on watercolor card. This one is just on plain white cardstock. I then did the same on black cardstock. Bit harder to tell it's yellow, but I think from closer up you can kind of see it's more of a yellowy tinge than a white tinge. This one was very saturated. This one I did loads of sprays of each, and I also dried in, betwe in between to layer them as well. So if you dry in between your sprays, they won't blend much at all. So you can really kind of stack them on top of each other. So if you want to add a lot of colors, which you'll see in a second, you can do that and you won't get a muddy look. It will be a very beautiful sort of multi-toned colored look. So here you can see it on the black. Now this is the um, pink and blue. So the pink food coloring and the blue distressing, oh no, blue food coloring. I did use blue food coloring, sorry. Good thing I wrote on the bottles. Um, so those are both food colorings and you can see them there on the right and on the left. And this again, is mostly using my 70-30 mixture. And this is where I used all the colors. So I came in with the pink, the blue, the yellow, and the purple, and put them all onto my paper. And I did dry between each layer, and I haven't got any kind of muddy look going on, and you can sort of see those colors in there. So the purple there is on the right. That was made with my light, slightly diluted version. And then the blue and the pink are made with the th thicker version. The yellow, I think, is the thinner version. Lots of different options of things you can do with these paints, lots of fun to be had. Now I'm obviously going to aim to make a couple cards using these panels, so you can check those out on my Instagram page which the link is down below in the description box for you. Now if you want to join me again, I am going to be crafting on Monday with my daughter. We are going to be making some handmade projects. Um, this is a blog hop with crafting together with all brands, so check out Monday's YouTube video. It'll be up first thing in the morning on Monday and Rosalie will be joining me for that one. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you had a lovely time and I hope you learned something new. Take care and have a fabulous weekend. Bye!